Vicky Lenane and welcome to Embrace Therapy Podcast. I am a practicing art therapist based in Ireland. In each episode, I will interview guests from various fields of therapy and well-being with the aim to encourage healing through embracing therapy. On the podcast this week is Dr. Jason Noon. He is a qualified music therapist in County Clare and County Limerick. He specialises in developing innovative applications of music technology for creative music making in disability contexts. He works mostly with children and adults with developmental disabilities, favouring a person-centred approach. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jason Noon. So Jason, you're based in Clare at the moment, is it? Or Clare Limerick yeah. Border? Yeah. Um, I, I, I live in Ennis, but yeah. most of my work would be in Limerick. Okay. Um, or Limerick and Ennis, yeah. And do you find that so, yeah, that happens? Do you find that that happens a lot with like, because it's the same with us in Cork, like when we do the training in Cork, a lot of people kind of stay around where they trained, they, they kind of get the work there. Um, did that happen for you? Was it was it similar that you trained in Limerick and then? Well, I'm 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 from here anyway, so um, you know, I was I was I was living here, uh, the whole time. But I suppose I I, I mean I did have plans to um. I think I was going to start working in Dublin after I graduated because I was I was doing my research work was in sensory integration and music therapy and, um there were kind of job opportunities in Dublin with that mm -hmm. but yeah it's, it's like you said I, I, I some work came up locally and I just went for that and um yeah Brilliant. 15 yeah. years later I'm still doing the same stuff so I'm very lucky well in that done sense, you know yeah um, like the, the, the first job I had out of college was taking over from someone who had supervised me on placement and things like that so um I was very lucky I kind of I kind of I fell into some very nice work very quickly um but you know i i, I built it af after that I, I will say I'll, I'll give myself a bit of credit for that but yeah I'm, I'm very lucky like times got very hard uh around the 2010 mark you know economically and things like that and there was a lot of um budgetary problems in in, in a lot of the places i was working so you know mm -hmm. e even then to have made it through that i, I feel i'm very grateful for um yeah we're often yeah. the first to go aren't so, we yeah i mean it, it for, for sure it's it's and I've, I've worked in places where music therapy was treated as a luxury or as a recreational thing or you know they love music or something like that and we're like well yes but you know that's you know that's that's not why we do it or that's not why it's beneficial mm -hmm. um and they could mean anybody you know just whatever 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 context um i was coming across but uh, like I, I work with enable ireland and um they got the work i mean they, they, like they'd had me they'd had like like i said they'd had a music therapist in before me but they 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 really got the work they when they were cutting things they were making a very concerted effort to keep the music therapy going it was one of the things that kind of had um very broad application within the centers i was working in and um yeah so it is it, it, and and you know it being a person-centered context um it was the feedback of the service users now they're now they're called service owners they've they've changed the terminology wow um but the <laughs> they were service users at the time but they've, they've it's now service owners um but you know th their feedback and their engagement with the music therapy program was a big part of why it was maintained um and a big part of why why management understood um the, the value of the work the value of the discipline i won't i won't i won't kind of claim too much credit for the, the value of the discipline itself mm -hmm. um so yeah that 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 was that's all i've yeah i have a, I have a lot of uh loyalty to them for that mm -hmm. yeah uh, amazing no, and it's, it's just it's a great place I, I, I love my it's job an, it's incredible really like you know like like you said it's it's an incredible service enable ireland like for people that don't know it's mostly you know people with physical disabilities would i be right in saying that yeah i, th I think i think d developmental disabilities is 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 the, the general term they'd use but yeah yeah f physical disabilities but the the, the 
range of functional diversity is huge, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's one of the things, again, um, I like about the work and it's one of the reasons they work so well is because, the, you know, um, so many different kinds of people access mm-hmm. their services that they, and they have to individualize the service to each of those people or, or res- respond in, in an individualized way to the things that these people want in their lives. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's really needed as well, that kind of individual approach. Um, you know, it's great. Would there ever be times where, you know, you're using groups? Is it like, is that something that you do as well? You, you take on groups or? Yeah, gr- gr- groups and one to one. And now, you know, in the, in the current circumstances a lot of telehealth mm. stuff and yeah. uh and that kind of thing as well and then i suppose the, the the kind of work i do would be called community music therapy um in some places and that is the idea that you you take the community uh itself that you're working in as a kind of unit of therapy as well um mm. so there are things that happen like in inside the kind of therapeutic space or inside the, the kind of integrity of the of the therapy room but there's stuff that happens kind of center wide or within the community as well that's that's that I get involved in too I saw it like you know that you're you're part of QCFM yeah <laughs> is is that a, a podcast that you kind of developed recently or is when did that start yeah well that that was actually I mean that's a great example of, of how Enable Ireland works because um the whole the whole person-centered side of Enable Ireland is codified it's formalized in a, an approach called person-centered planning mm-hmm. and that's a way of helping people with disabilities to define and plan for and achieve their goals whatever they might be so qcfm started out as a project where uh, a man in the limerick center um wanted to start a radio station he he, he had had some experience he, he just a big radio fan and uh, had had a bit of training and had visited some radio stations, but he really wanted to kind of work in a radio station. So um, funding was found. And so there's between a, a few different kind of staff and people in the center, um, funding was found to buy equipment and mm. um, we trained. So, and, and I, I was using a lot of music technology in my work at the time. So, mm-hmm. um, we kind of geared it towards the, the kind of stuff people were familiar with already through, through accessing music therapy and kind of set up this this radio station slash podcast uh, project that that ran for a good few years. It, it, it kind of languished a little bit, um, but, we, you know, all, all the stuff is still up there online. So it, and loads of people from the center then started to contribute and get interested in it. And so if people do, it's if they put QCFM into Google, you'll find it on. I think we put it all up on SoundCloud and there's loads of different types of shows. There's talk shows, there's improvisation, there's sports, that that kind of thing. Um, and since the pandemic or the, the, the situation um, mm-hmm. with with the the the, the advent of, of kind of more online virtual stuff, Enable Ireland partnered with Microsoft to set up um, a virtual service mm. for for people accessing uh, accessing Enable Ireland uh, over Microsoft Teams, and so everyone has got their own Teams account. There are chat rooms every day. I do music therapy sessions through Teams. There are just music sessions and games and things like that as well that aren't therapeutic for people. And one of the new things now is we've kind of revived the the podcast idea um to make it a, a part of the virtual service too so uh, a lot of the people who are involved in qcfm are now involved in a slightly de- a, a, a revised version of that project that's called um, harmony oh lovely um, we're not sure that, we, we've argued over whether it should be harmony fm which I've said it shouldn't because it's it's not technically on the airwaves, but that's maybe even pedantic. But you know, so um, so that idea is still is still very much alive. Um, yeah. So so that's it's again it's it's it, it's slightly outside of what I do as a therapist, but it does involve a lot of the the kind of 
skills and and training that I've had and just my experience on on the ground um and that kind of role ambiguity is mm-hmm. is I think very, very familiar to creative arts therapists um for music therapists certainly because we're always getting asked to do things beyond what would strictly be our job description mm-hmm. but that adds value to the to the role I think yeah it's lovely to see it that way that like it does add value and that it's that just sounds so empowering like to be involved in that project gosh like I mean, I mean that that is that is literally it that is literally mm-hmm. the and I, I know I'm, I'm sounding like a like a, a salesman for enable ireland or whatever but that is literally their mission statement is is mm-hmm. um empowerment for people with disabilities and sometimes that is about connecting people with ordinary experiences with with things that people without disabilities take for granted um especially in terms of accessing the community and, and developing and using skills that are valuable um so that's a big part of, that's a big part of it that that it has to be self-directed and there has to be a lot of ownership involved as well um and that that means that it's it's also you, you, there's so much creativity in projects like that because you're always adapting you're always kind of generating new ideas and when someone has an idea you have to find a way of running with it um and yeah so that's 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 really it doesn't doesn't always work out but again the f it's always worth trying you know that's that's yeah, that's kind yeah. of the the general mentality you know and and that's true in everything that creative arts therapists do as well it's like you just got to try it (laughs) do you know that's that creative part isn't it you know if you don't try you'll never you'll never know yeah and 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 it also you know the the person sent i mean there you know there are different therapeutic contexts and there are different orientations and different training you know methods and things like that and i do think you know this is not not to, not to be critical, but I, th- I think there are more authoritarian ways of therapy work and there are more kind of person centered or community based ways of working. And the authoritarian method is fine and may be absolutely necessary in some contexts um, where the, the, the therapist is seen as an expert who kind of guides you through uh, towards goals that they have decided for you or that that kind of thing and uh where the 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 way i work and and the people i've learned from work um it's it's going to appear looser and it might appear even chaotic but really it's about you know you're you're prioritizing the the person you're working with and following their impulses wherever that might go you know you know like you're saying there like even like them accessing the community and and even just having a voice in the community you know um i just I just find that Enable Ireland is great for that, really. Um, Like even just changing it from service user to service owner is just like totally flips it. And and that that was that that was voted on by the service owner, the now service owners. I'm still getting used to it myself. It's only happened in the last few weeks. Um, But that that was voted on by by people themselves um, as a a way of to, to make their identity more active sounding that service user sounded more passive or it sounded like it was, yeah, it, 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 linguistically it, we, we had huge trouble getting our heads around, <laughs> around it. But the, the implication of service user was that it made, made people sound passive or like they were in receipt of something rather than people who were the agents of everything, you know, that, that, that was going on. Mm-hmm. And, and like you say, enable, enable has been great at that. I mean, I uh, like this philosophy, the person centeredness of first person centeredness, goes all the way to the top of you you you, you, you know the, from management and ceo like they, they all talk in the same terms they all work with with the same kind of goals in mind and i've worked in places which that have espoused kind of person-centered principles um where it hasn't been embodied as well as as enable ireland i won't i won't name the um the places but it, it's very easy to pay lip service to these ideas and then just not enact them at all you know um but it's it's far more fun and far more satisfying if if it's actually if it's actually happening you know oh yeah absolutely I can really feel the passion from you it's lovely it's really nice um but yeah I was just thinking about going back to um when you said sensory integration and and I just wanted to unpack that a bit because 
have an idea of what you mean when you say that is like a research area for you um but maybe not every listener will understand what exactly that is and how it's implemented and you know mm. what what it basically is could you maybe say a little bit more about that sure yeah um well sense, sense integration is is a a process that, that, that a, a developmental process but a process that we have throughout our life um whereby sensory information is sorted um so that we can make sense of it and um that's it for most people this is unconscious and it's uh undisrupted and and it's it's you know absolutely no thought required but for people with difficulties with sensory integration or sensory modulation um that can create issues it, it can mean that so you know um I, I I hate to be pathological, but it's it's it makes it easier to describe in terms of particular conditions. So people with autism can have sensory integration issues where um, they can be hyposensitive or hypersensitive to particular sensory information and, and, and hyperacusis as, as a music therapist. Hyperacusis is one we have to be very conscious of. And that's where people are extra sensitive to sound. Um, but there, you know, it, 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 these sensitivities or disruptions can be in any sense. Um, my research was with children with dyspraxia. So that was um, a, a condition that's where sent the disruption of um, proprioceptive and vestibular uh, sensory information creates coordination problems. So proprioception is your sense of where your body is in space and what, you know, reaching for things and knowing and that that kind of thing. And your vestibular system is your sense of balance, your sense of kind of um, your relationship to gravity. And um, when these senses are disrupted, um, it, it, it creates coordination problems. So um, my research was on how music activities and music therapy could help to reorganize um, these systems using principles from sensory integration therapy, which is um, a based in uh, originated in occupational therapy. Mm -hmm. So it, it was seeing if some of these principles could be um, worked on using music therapy techniques. Um, not 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 and and again, it gets complicated in terms of um, not trying to do occupational therapy with music, or not trying to do sensory integration therapy which is a very specific thing that requires specific training but just seeing if these concepts would work within a music therapy um context mm. and you know it had been written about before as well so that, that that's where i kind of became interested in it but it's it's relatively new and um yeah it was that, that was and and you know that was the, the research i did there was was i was working with uh with children and that was child-centered work again it was working in a self-directed way um so again, that all kind of fed into my whole um, philosophy or, or approach. Any, you know, mm, sounds like a really lovely process that like has just continued. You know, it's really lovely. Um, and working with children um, in that area is just fantastic. Um, and then taking that knowledge with the adults that you have in the service you're currently working in, I'd say it's nice mm. to have that the back of your mind having known that research as well to be aware of it in yes. adults mm. and absolutely and it, it it all drills down to the same thing i mean it is it is all about i mean dys, dyspraxia in particular is um a very like i said it's it's a, it's considered by some to be a sensory disorder and it has it has these kind of physical aspects but really what it is also is it's it has emotional components as well where a child who has these coordination issues, um, you know, has has may have self esteem issues going with that and things like that, and and a, a sense of uh, and th and that these activities that target these sensory systems also have the effect of empowering someone and making someone feel in control of of the things they're doing and and take pleasure in their own skills and and all of that. So that, again, that's all very consistent across. The work I do, which is, you know, as as non -path pathological as I can make it, although referral criteria will always be clinical to some degree, but really about connecting a person with their own strengths and and um, supporting them and and witnessing that 
and um yeah and, and seeing what happens you know l l leaving some room for kind of surprise um when people do access those skills amazing and and the great thing as well it's like there's no with that approach there's no need to to judge yourself in the moment you know just being in that play spontaneity you know in that space it's uh you know it sounds really really encouraging and like you said transformational in a way like you know it can really help support people but yeah but and 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 it's it's a challenge as a therapist because you still have to have you have to keep your training in mind you have to keep your your mind on the, the kind of may, maybe not specific goals or very defined clinical goals but goal areas or you know uh, some kind of trajectory for the work um so it's it's a lot to kind of hold in your head at once which again is part of the reason it's so fun to do um but but as you say because it's it's emergent and um and person-centered it, it does mean you can't you can let go of and, and should let go of expectations of the person or of your, of yourself to work a certain way. And, um, and like I said, yeah, let, 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 let yourself be surprised and, but be, you know, able to kind of maximize the, the potential of these surprises. Mm. What would that look like? You know, like even if you were to kind of paint a picture of what, what kind of instruments are in the space as well and how, you know, you might move from something like even more electronical stuff or, you know, I suppose just an insight as to how in the room it might work or even through telehealth, um, what that might look like right now. Mm. Well, the, the telehealth is, is is quite limited. I mean, that that's uh, in, in some ways um, it's, it's either trying to replicate the feeling of being in the room with someone which is difficult because as, as, as we're encountering now, there is this delay that, uh, you know, ma makes it, makes interactions a little more difficult, even, you know, within the music therapy when, when we're being completely musical. Um, so the telehealth stuff is more about kind of trying to approximate the feeling of being in the room, which is, which is quite difficult, but in terms of, um, kind of, finding a thread and following it within a session. Um, that is one of the reasons I use music technology is because um, a lot of the, the software and the hardware I, I use have functions and affordances and possibilities for um, individualizing an interface to a particular person. That means that uh, that is very intuitive so that the, the people I work with get a sense of how these things work as well. and end up com you know, asking for particular functions, asking for an interface that does this particular musical thing. And that, that it, and um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be more specific, but um, like it's, it's, it's the technology is, is like, imagine you could build a completely new in musical instrument for a specific person and do that every week, build a different one every week, for, for depending on how that person's feeling or how they move or what they want to hear. Um, and that, that kind of, that's kind of what the, the technology involves. And then you, you're going to hit snags and limitations and, and problems, but then the fun is trying to overcome that too. Um, so, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give an example because this, this is a one I, 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 I have permission to use. Um, is there's a, a man I work with who ha, who has, again, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable using path, pathologizing language, but if it helps people get the idea of, of the person, it's, he has um, uh, quadriplegic cerebral palsy. So he has, he has um, cerebral palsy, which means that he, he can't control any of his limbs, but he can control his, his right leg slightly. And um, he uses that to drive a power chair with a switch. So the, the power chair has arrows in, on a display. When the arrow is pointing in the direction he wants to go, he clicks the switch and the chair moves. Um, and that has just given him a, you know, a level of freedom and, and of move, mobility that he's never had before. Um, and in our work, we replace that switch with a switch that connects to a drum 
synthesizer in my software, in my computer, and c connect it with different effects that mean that when he, I, 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 I'm very close to just going into the whole thing and I, I, I really try not to, but um, with this one button press, he can play something like give or take 24 different drum patterns wow. um, th that, uh, that happen randomly. So he, every time he clicks, he'll get a different drum beat. So he doesn't, he doesn't create the drum beats, but he, if he doesn't like the one that he's hearing, he can click and get a different one. And so he has control over um, his musical expression. And that was an interface that we developed, you know, over weeks and months of going from one press means one drum sound. How do we get more sounds? How do we get more choice? Um, and, and making these decisions together um, so that he has the right balance of uh, the technology doing a certain amount for him and him having a sense of ownership and him being in control of what he hears. Um, but again, yeah, that's that's the kind of thing. I, 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 I would spend a very long time talking about that because that's, that's uh, um, it's very satisfying work, but um, yeah, it would gosh. be very techy. That's amazing. Work. Uh, just the autonomy in that it's in, it's incredible just to be able to have that control gosh amazing and, and that's it that's it exactly yeah. mm. overcome obstacles as well I loved that you just mentioned that you know yeah yeah I mean there was in, in my in my um uh doctoral research there was there was these this post-structuralist and post-modernist methods I was using and one of the kind of um, axioms, one of the kind of the, the the kind of advice in in this was to be a friend to the problem. Um, this this idea that problems are not things to panic about; they're not things that that get in the way. They're th things that provide opportunity and that, that provoke you to think. And um, and so you know, we engage problems together. Uh, in in, a, in the work that we do in Enable Ireland, and and see what we come up with, and that's that's a really um, stimulating way to work. And I think I, th I think it's a it's a basically it's, it's just a good way to kind of live, you know, um, mm. from day to day as well. Yeah, befriend the problem. That's yeah, yeah huge. <laughs> that's lovely. I'm going to take that away as well today. Gosh. I, mean, I I I was I was it was far too late in my life before I came across that phrase. I wish I'd come across that phrase decades sooner. Um, yeah. I might have saved myself a lot of uh, stress. Um, <laughs> um. Oh, that's it's really lovely. Um. Yeah. I I wrote down some kind of things that I wanted to kind of cover, but we're getting we're getting through them anyway. Um. Oh yeah. I I just wrote down like what is it like being a supervisor so just even noticing the different hats that you wear you know that you're a music therapist but you also do supervision mm. um and like I'm always curious about that because it's an area that I I might go into one day but just not right now but I, I wonder what it's like wearing that hat of being supervisor and how does it differ for you yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I was a supervisor. I mean, I, I'm not a, a, a qualified supervisor in the sense of supervising graduate therapists. I supervised through the, the MA course in UL um, and taught there a lot over the years as well. And um, so it's, it's, it's been supervising trainee music therapists. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think in, in some ways it's, it's just it's it's paying back the supervision I got the the advice and the guidance, um, and support that that I got from from my supervisors when I trained, and part of it as well is this is this I'm going to sound very serious here, is is because it's one of the few gatekeepers of the discipline that exist in Ireland at the moment. There aren't very many, um, graduate, uh, supervisors, mm -hmm. um, so. I what what it boils down to. I mean, I I I love supervising. I love I love watching students succeed and and kind of get to grips with 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 ideas and and all those things that I loved about being a student. Um, but there's also a, a responsibility that I I love the discipline of music therapy so much that um I really want to make sure 
that I can do everything I can to make sure that the therapists who are who are coming out love love music therapy just as much and are just as um aware of the responsibility of good practice and that, that kind of thing mm-hmm. um but they're all all the students who've ever come to work at enable ireland have left their mark they've they've done great work and they've all approached it slightly differently so i i get something from that too i, I get to kind of absorb some of their perspective um and not kind of stagnate in 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 my own work um so that's a slightly selfish aspect of it as well like it keeps it keeps it refreshes my perspective on the work to have uh, new people come in and um see how they react you know it's so important isn't it to keep that fresh like mind and yeah I, i'm finding that i'm i'm on the icat council this year and um there's a lot of people that like that again just a really positive and really have their nose to the ground with certain areas that I wouldn't really have an awareness of um, and and just that just kind of keeping you on your toes a little bit and getting the excitement uh, you know that thrill of it again like you know oh this this could be used okay I'm going to bring that into my own practice so just exactly that I think it's so important yeah but I, I have I also have a bit of a reputation of being um, a bit of a taskmaster too of being, yeah uh, bit hard to please I might as well admit that as well um but uh like I said it's it's because I love my job and and um and 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 I feel responsible to the people who are going to be receiving therapy um Mm. in the future Mm. you know just to whatever little degree yeah 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 it's brilliant and and what about yourself Jason like how how do you mind yourself as a therapist because at the moment I don't know about you but the work is getting you know I suppose with the pandemic and everything that came with it, it just seems to be a different kind of tone to the work, um, whether that's through the org- organization that you're in and the service that you provide, like, is it, is it even noticed in, in, in that way? Or like for me in private practice, I'm, I'm finding it uh, completely different to, you know, even two years ago when I started the kind of, um, caseload and everything but for yourself like how do you mind yourself how do you you know maintain uh you know the level that you have aspired and like you said even the task uh task uh, master that you are how do you maintain that for yourself that support level um well I I I I mean I'm it's it's a physician heal thyself kind of thing I when I, I I go to work every day and I play music for the day and when I come home and I have a few minutes I play more music um like that's that's it's it's part of who I am and and um like I I I, I agree that the last year has been difficult for everybody and has brought out new stresses and kind of conflicts and difficulties for people um and especially you know in 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 the disability community because so many people were cocooned to to a a, a, you know a really difficult degree people in independent living um were very isolated because you know their their staffing rates were cut down some people were at home with their families and weren't, weren't able to see the people they were used to seeing every day um and that that was very palpable like you know like uh, that that was that was hard to hard not to notice and this was one of the reasons that the virtual service um became such a lifeline for people because it it connected people in a daily way it brought some little bit of of connection and and normality and communication back and for me i so i mean that that was one of the first things um i did after we were all sent home on march 18th 2020 is to set up a YouTube channel and and start live streaming every day. Um, and so I, I'd live stream an hour of guitar improvisation, which was just meant to be a kind of relaxation mm-hmm. um, session for people and an hour of songs where people would come on the live chat and request songs. And that, again, it, it wasn't strictly music therapy because it was kind of detached and it wasn't as active or in, in uh, as in, yeah it wasn't as interactive as 
as music therapy usually would be. Plus, it was on a public platform, so there was no um, possibility of confidentiality or, or really, you know, talking about anything too intense. Um, but it did connect people. It was it was a way of people to kind of share an experience and to share music in the moment. And we said this thing that, you know, if you're singing along, you know, all your friends are singing along too, even if you know you can't hear them. And 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 this it was a nice way of kind of creating a, a sense of synchrony among people. So as far as kind of there was such a, a that was such a technical challenge for me to work out how to do that. Um, that even that kind of was part of the my engagement with with these new circumstances as well. It, it kind of it brought me it brought my work along further because I was having to find new ways to think about how to connect with people musically. Mm -hmm. um, so I you know had had I not had that I might have felt very kind of um, demoralized or detached from 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 the work I wanted to do you know what I mean so it, it, it kind of it satisfied that part of me that was worried about how to how to carry on my work and how to um, help the people that I was used to seeing um before we were all sent home um yeah and you know the, the service owners even were sent you know like you said cocooning as well so it was like you felt what they felt you know that disconnect was was felt throughout the the service and yeah it's it's unusual to feel that to feel what our clients might feel um in that way and I think that's a really nice connection even on that level mm. yeah and I mean it's I, I know therapists are, aren't supposed to drive kind of therapeutic benefits from their own work but it, it, it at the same time it, it was it was a good thing for me to be able to do something mm -hmm. um and um you know I, 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 it's, it's over a year later and we're still doing those youtube sessions because some some people still haven't come they come back to the centers yet um so whatever sense of community and 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 the sense of community that came through those youtube sessions was not due to me it was due to the the way people were interacting on the live chat were doing their best to kind of make themselves um known to, to to the other people who are watching too so that that was that was a very again it's it, i i had no like going back to what we were saying earlier i had no idea what would happen or how it would grow and it grew in ways i could not have predicted or could not have contrived um and that that energy that people themselves put into it um sustained it throughout throughout the whole year mm -hmm. um so that was, yeah, it was lovely to be a part of that, but I was only a part of it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So the, the music sustains you and the community that you're in, you know, that it's, that it, the music itself for you even just fills your cup, you know, that you can come home and that you can do your music yourself. And yeah, that keeps you going. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. I think that's the great thing about us when we're creative arts therapists that we have that passion that's in us and it's um it's something we can continuously fall back on you know that creative part of us um, yeah it's so important thank you for sharing that it's lovely um and the youtube channel because it's public we can all access you know which is lovely <laughs> yeah yeah if, if you want but um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, it was wasn't wasn't ideal, but it was the most accessible yeah. platform for people, you know. The, um, so again, there was a trade off, as there always is, um, to kind of make it as accessible and maybe sacrifice some of the things mm. that you have to then to to, mm. to maintain that accessibility. But yeah, it means there are a lot of videos of me struggling to get through songs I only half remember and and that that kind of thing, and that was all part of the fun too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. Um, and so what's it looking like for you now, kind of going into this summer and the unlock and that feeling of getting back mm. into into the building, perhaps? Are you in the building yeah. again or? Yes. Yeah. Um, the the centres were reopened back in September, um, but with some pretty severe 
restrictions in terms of how many people could be in a building and how how many you know um how, i i can't do groups anymore because the, the, not allowed to have that many people in a room um and that's i suppose that's one of the reasons the online stuff is still going but um yeah so so really we we've, we've had the, the program has continued with some amount of in person work and uh, virtual work also um but as the we're, we're all basically waiting for our second vaccination um and then once that happens people are going to feel a lot more comfortable coming back and we'll be allowed to to have more people in the buildings and basically i'm i'm looking forward to getting back to you know my actual job um mm -hmm. and and working with people face to face um I, I don't sound kind of disparaging of of telehealth or virtual work but it's it's it, it's hmm. um it's more of a challenge than 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 the face to face stuff and um so that's basically kind of what what i'm looking forward to is is seeing more people face to face um but yeah i i mean i've 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 been working flat out since september um one way or the other so i'm again very pleased about that to 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 have that um structure mm -hmm. you know and and that yeah. kind of thing and to have to be part of an organization that that tries to maintain um a certain level of service provision for everybody um yeah brilliant um and with regards to research are you thinking about doing any more research or is the doctorate part of you kind of complete you feel like you want to do more or what's that like for you that's a that's an interesting question um i mean the the the, the doctorate that was that was six long years um for me and um i was working multiple jobs at that time so it, it took a lot out of me yeah. as as some of the music therapists who were listening might be able to um attest um but there were ideas that came out of that research that i really want to pursue and that was that was all the research was ever about it was about fo following an idea and developing an idea um rather than ha you know, having having the title or the or the qualification or whatever um so yeah there, there's there's some stuff i want to do i haven't worked out how to do it yet or or on what um and in some ways i'm, I'm too busy one, one doing the, the the music therapy stuff um uh because it, it was one thing i, I mean I, I loved doing the research and it was action research so it was it was participatory research with the service owners where we, we kind of co-designed and co-ran the, the research together um and as much as i liked the research and as much as i have liked teaching and supervision as well um i like being a therapist most of all so um it would be very hard to give any of that time up to something else when it's you know the thing i really love you know mm -hmm. um but the, the the ideas are still niggling at me so I, I will have to find a way of um you know developing them a bit more yeah would you ever write for the journal the icast uh polyphony journal i i have done yeah, yeah. um and uh that, that was great because because i i like the format of it it's it's it, it challenged me to kind of um write a certain way and be, be nice and precise and, and succinct and that kind of thing in ways that i'm generally not um so yeah i i and i'll probably I'll probably try and submit something there again mm. uh, at some point yeah I think the summer, summer, summer will be a little bit quieter for me, so I'll be able to sit down and um, gather my thoughts a bit. Yeah, it sounds like it's part of who you are. It's part of the work that you do, that kind of um, research as well. You know, I know the music therapy is yeah. number one, but yeah, it seems like it's part of you as well. That passion. Well, I mean, it's 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 all about improving my practice. It's all about and 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 reflecting the or maybe it'd be better to say reflecting the improvements of practice that have happened because of the collaborations between me and the service owners I work with mm -hmm. and, and making sure that that is, is kind of as well understood and as well operationalized as possible. Um, and also I, I mean, I, I, this is one thing I say to my students is, um, that 
thinking this way and trying to improve your work is that the, 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 one, the one thing I'm terrified of in my work is becoming complacent or, or stagnating in any way of becoming um, too habitual in my work or anything like that. So I'm, I'm always trying to find new things that force me to think differently about how I work and that, that progress my practice and the, in, in some way. Um, and that's that's what this, this stuff that I'm now thinking about that I'm trying to kind of um, pull together and, and articulate is, is just another variation of that. Mm, brilliant. Yeah. So you might have a, a busy summer ahead, even though you feel like it's quiet. You might be unpacking all those thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I, I'm, I'm also um, very good at procrastinating. So, you know, I might get to the end of the summer and not have done anything. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's it, 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 it's 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 gonna happen at some point yeah definitely watch this space <laughs> um yeah I thank you so much Jason like I feel like we could probably sit and talk for the rest of the evening um it's lovely it's lovely getting to chat with you and, and getting to to know what it's like you know over in the west of Ireland and how things are um I'm fascinated by music therapy, so it's it's lovely to have you on talking about it. Yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, That's, uh, uh, lovely to uh, to to talk as much as I did as well. Thanks. <laughs>